Should body count matter? I don't have an issue with it mattering for certain people, but for me it doesn't matter, and I wouldn't be attracted to a guy for which it, he finds it to be pertinent information. Um, no one else's body count matters but my own. That makes sense. Sort of. <laughs> so like you that. you wouldn't <laughs> yeah. you wouldn't uh, mind dating a guy who uh, <coughs> had like 300 previous sexual partners? I'd be intimidated. <laughs> okay. But I wouldn't mind. Sure. Um, personally, it doesn't matter. I've been dating this guy for like eight months now. He, I don't know his body count. He doesn't know mine and we don't really care. Sure. Yeah, same. I don't, I think that it's fine if it matters to you or your partner. I think you guys can discuss that privately, but um, I, to me, it doesn't matter now. I think it does matter. Um, you know, they say that if you're interested in a relationship, best proof to future behavior is relevant past behavior. I, I don't know about the statistics for men. I still think it matters if you're a woman what your like male partner's body count is. But I know for women, um, there is a correlation between number of partners before marriage and likelihood of divorce. So I, you know, we can go into exactly what the reasons might be. But I think overall, uh, you know, for a prospective boyfriend or husband to care about that, I think it it's reasonable. So are you talking about the Institute of Family Studies? Because that's the one study that's shown. It. Interestingly, they show that two is the worst. And if you have two, it like shows it goes up after nine. So would you have someone who slept with two people? Would you say they should sleep with a few more so their likelihood of divorce goes down? And if we're going to talk about divorce statistics, they're, like the first thing you should be looking at is a college-educated woman. It's their first marriage and that they're between 25 and 32 because those are the three biggest things that really reduce your likelihood of divorce. If you just do those three, your divorce rate is now at 20% instead of 50. So yeah, I do think it's and I think it's a good conversation to have if you're talking about lifestyle, right? If you right. slept with hundreds of people, you probably party a lot, you probably drink a lot, and if the other person doesn't, but this, and yeah, maybe a little bit it does, you know, if you're like, oh, the likelihood of divorce and stuff, but if someone's going to use that, ooh, the likelihood of divorce, then I expect you to pick women that at least on those things that matter far more when we're talking about likelihood of getting divorced. I mean, I'm, I'm for men, especially when it comes to marriage, being very picky. So I'm not okay. going to say no, like, I, yes, absolutely, with divorce rates, what they are, I think you should be as much as possible trying to, I don't want to say hedge your best because that's mm -hmm. not a good way to w look at a marriage. But yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense to try and be as smart and you know, as possible, especially like we were talking about, you know, divorce courts that, yeah, all of these things should matter. A holistic yeah. approach to not wanting to get divorced if you will yeah that study is just funny because it it goes up the highest is two and then it kind of goes down until like nine and then it goes up again so if you're going to hedge your bets if you've only slept with two people you might want to add a few more in because according to that well, one I think study when you when you cross <laughs> i would want to see the like a multivariate regression that actually takes into account age because what that tells someone like me is that the, the highest being two it's likely people who are younger who are getting married which we it also could be. know yeah. the likelihood if you're you know 18 to get it married and divorce is going to be much higher than if you're 25 or something I agree. Like that. I, that's why I'm at kind of, it's annoying that that's the one study that even shows that is that one Institute of Families. I think there should be more research done on this. Yeah. And I, I am not just basing my answer off that one study either. But do you really need a study to know that promiscuity is an undesirable trait well it's actually so desirability is different than divorce so actually there has been stud studies done on lifetime partners and the, that impacting your likelihood of marriage and there's no impact so your body count doesn't actually impact your likelihood of getting married it does impact likelihood of divorce that's true but it doesn't impact obviously doesn't impact desirability enough because men are still just as these women are still just as likely to get a ring on it as women who have lower body counts and that's Out what we're trying to change with this uh, show. How about Jasmine, that? Jasmine, you really need to stop bringing up college education. <laughs> education itself is not what leads to lateral attraction. Even if partners have same education, income and socioeconomic status holds more weight than education itself. Not with divorce and divorce statistics. Co education is a variable that has been shown to have this effect more so than those other ones. But I did say socioeconomic status uh, does impact it. Well, it's hard to divorce them, right? I mean, someone from a certain socioeconomic status, you're almost guaranteed to have like gone to college if your parents make over. So you can't really, like he's trying to say, divorce them. They're, they're overlapping. I think, to, yeah, they could, and, and people of higher socioeconomic status do get divorced less often, and I think maybe that could be because it's also college education, and also a lot of couples um, argue about finances, and if you're of a higher socioeconomic status, and you're not worried, you don't have those stresses of, like, poverty, how am I going to put food on the table, those things impact your relationship, so, yeah.